I, I was sitting in the last row and the, there was so much agitation amongst the salesmen. So I asked Mr. Narayanan, uh, Mr. Narayanan, you know, should you really push this because the, they are very unhappy? He said, Balu, we are just, you know, soaking it in. We are seeding the idea. You know, we have no plan to do it this year. It's actually going to be done next year. But as you know, uh, we are taking away something easy and asking them to work a lot more to get the same incentive. Now, uh, after after the second stage of paying incentives on invoicing, we'll start paying in incentives on collections. At that time, Hindustan Liver was paying, you know, having a system of uh, collecting a signed check from the uh, from who they called RS retail stockists. We call them ADs, authorized dealer. So. Uh, Mr. Narayan said, Balu, we are just seeding the idea so it will soak in. So by the time we in introduce it next year, most resistance would have died. Now that tells you something about Mr. Narayan. How far ahead does he think? And how well he understands the human mind and how it adapts, how it operates. Just think about this. If only uh, government of India has soaked the idea of uh, changing the form loss, in the minds of the farmers for a few years. Uh, Mr. Narayanan's logic was that if we keep talking about it, the salesman will realize at some point of time, the change will happen. It is inevitable. So that tells you something about how much of a visionary Mr. Narayanan is, how much of a, how much patience he has got. Uh, you know, uh, whenever people are in manufacturing and finance refuse to cooperate with marketing, and I would ask him, look, how can we pull together as one company? He would say, Balu, just wait and see. All these people will fall by the wayside. Those who are progressive, those who think of this as one company will stay and prosper. So he, he, he was that much of a visionary. He was that much of a patient man. And he understood human mind far better than anyone else. There are so many other things I can talk about, Mr. Narayanan. But if I do... I will be uh, stealing your thunder, which is not the purpose of uh, this meeting. Uh, before I close, I want to uh, warmly thank Group Captain Vijay Kumar. Uh, we all know Mr. Narayanan, so we are uh, fond of him. We care for him. We have our affection for him. But uh, Vijay, uh, what yeah. made you come, come and offer this to me? I mean, you didn't, you have not met Mr. Narayanan. Yeah. Uh, good evening to everyone. It's indeed a privilege. Uh, in fact, uh, during the course of the uh, Pons Veteran uh, Radio Speak series and my interaction with the leaders and as well as Mr. Balraman, uh, I heard so much about Mr. Uh, Narayanan and every time I hear, I get inspired. But it's uh, my sad uh, thing. I didn't have the privilege of uh, working with him or even meeting him uh, doing anything. And I thought when uh, Balraman offered this, uh, would he do that? I said it's a great uh, privilege and honor for him to facilitate this evening. And uh, it's only the loss is entirely mine and have an opportunity to work with him. And uh, thanks so much uh, to all the Pons veterans uh, for really inspiring so many members and so many people through your inspiring talk. And that is the reason where I heard so much about Mr. Narayan. And people so fondly remember him even after so many years of uh, working with him. That shows and that is what the loyalty we had in our armed forces because we worked under one of the air marshals. We never forget him, forgive him or whatever happened all through our life. Thank you, Mr. Balraman, for uh, this opportunity. Indeed, grateful and privileged. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Group Captain. I, I have to recognize Mr. Ute. She's present here. Dilip, thank you for joining us. Your mic is muted. Hello. It's my pleasure, Badu. Thank you. Yeah, do, do you want to say a couple of words? I, I know you. All, all I can say, Badu, is that I joined Pond sometime in 1977 as a director. And I had known VR, as I used to call him. A wonderful person, patient, and always encouraging. We used to have meetings going on from 9 a.m. onwards, right up to 7 with a lunch break. Hmm. And after 7, we'll again meet, have some refreshment, and talk about what had gone by in the meeting. That was all because of the encouragement and love and affection that Nari gave us. Thank you, Balu. 
thank you dilip thank you thank you for being here thank you for saying such things now uh, we do have a pre agreed uh, uh, list the next to come i think is uh, kannan sitara yeah thank you thank you so much uh, mr balram uh, you sort of raised the question uh, guru or god um i, I think uh, as i speak today i uh, think of him i remember him as a, a really wonderful uh, human being and i'm so glad that we have had this opportunity today to celebrate his life by sharing our memory memories and i was thinking about all the memories that i have of him over the last so many years um and really today i am full of warmth as i recollect uh, some of those uh, uh, you know meetings thoughts that we exchanged views that we spoke about etc um i joined ponds in 81 <clears throat> he retired from ponds in 91 so during those 10 years i was at the head office for uh, seven of those 10 years and of course work uh, in the course of work we interacted uh, several times but i was also uh, part of the team which helped him prepare his agm uh, speeches um and, and you know it, it was a truly interesting experience because on the one hand uh, it was not an easy thing to do in those days you had to handwrite the whole speech he would meticulously edit those speeches then you kind of rewrote things and so on and then after two three versions he was finally happy with uh, how his what he had in his mind was coming over and then you had to go through the the um, you know uh, preparing the 35 mm slides and uh, it was not an easy thing to do because typefaces could be chipped there could be pinholes in the slides and so on and so forth and then you had to sit at the back of the behind the screen Uh, with a uh, typewritten uh, speech and click the slides as you progress etc so that was one side of working with him on uh, the speeches but the exhilarating part was he was trying to explore different um, ideas of uh, management and uh, talking those through with him was something which was really really uh, mind expanding uh, he he was totally of course convinced about the importance of culture and of course those words a culture of character and competence is something that lives with all of us ordinary people doing extraordinary things is another uh, thing that he really felt deeply about every right carries with it uh, an obligation was another very very important thought that he had and something that he said to me several times which i have remembered to this date is he said to me several times that a leader's duty is to be not kind but to be fair and i keep reflecting on that because for me at least whenever you think of a leadership issue one that involves people this again comes to me you know what is the right thing to do and then you apply this thought of should you be kind or are you being fair and then i think things fall into uh, place above all i think he was um, very very convinced that to build successful indian companies you need to build an indian style of management something which was rooted in our indian uh, ethos and his role model for that was our, that of the joint family uh, and his concept was that in a joint family different uh, members of the family come together they draw strength from each other and that's how the joint family really grows on strength to strength and that in some way was the inspiration behind many of the things that he pursued at pons a kind of symbol symbolism a kind of if you like organizational rituals that he felt were important to help the the members of the pons family understand what we were all about actually very very different to what the management books were talking about which was more the the us style more they may call it more mercenary approach to 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 leadership um the big turning point was obviously 1986 when unilever acquired uh, cp inc and mr narayanan very very clearly understood that life had changed uh, forever and interestingly his major concern 
was really what would happen to all of us, the members of uh, his uh, team. And he told me several times about what happened to Brook Bond when Unilever acquired Brook Bond. And he told me that Samuel had made a big mistake when he resisted unileverization of Brook Bond. And he said that Samuel uh, stood on his ego because he was more senior to the then chairman of uh, Hindustan Diva. And that then really harmed careers of people at Brook Bond. And he was determined that that should not happen to us at Pons. So he threw the doors open uh, for Hindustan Lever to, to walk in. But I must say, when I think back on some of those incidents, uh, he was a really a classy man. He did that with, uh, in his own very inimitable style. Because as Hindustan Lever walked in, the stage was set for what, you, what he wanted Hindustan Lever to take out of it. And I'll just recall one incident, which was when Keki Dadi, Dadi said came to visit us for the first uh, time. Keki, even at that time, was on the fast track. He was director of personnel, director of PP. And, uh, you know, Mr. Narendra wanted to communicate it to him the kind of quality of the team that was there at uh, Pons. So uh, after all the presentations by the Pons leadership team, we had lunch together, I think at the Konimara. And before lunch, all of us were invited to be there and just give a very, very brief introduction to us, you know, what kind of schools we had been to, uh, the kind of roles we had been to at uh, Ponds and so on. And as we were picking up our uh, uh, lunch from the buffet, Ms. Naran asked me to sit next to Keki. And if I remember right, and I'm not quite sure, I think it was Candy who was seated on the other side of Keki. And I can tell you, Keki was blown over. He was telling us again and again that he was amazed to see the quality of management talent that Pons uh, had assembled uh, in the company. So, so I, and I, you know, when you reflect on it, uh, Unilever walked in, Hindustan Lever walked in, they were talking about what the Hindustan Lever HR systems were, but they walked out with all the messages that Mr. Narayanan wanted to, them to take home. And that was, I think, his, his very, very, inimitable uh, style that to make sure that there was no perceived resistance to anything, but the messages were delivered. Uh, he also had this uh, really wonderful habit of um, handwriting uh, little notes. I was going through all the different stuff in my you know, files and I discovered this little handwritten note. I'm not sure, I'm sure you can't see it. No, we can't read it. You can't read it. I will send it to you later if anybody is interested. I am. This is dated 20th of August, 1981, right? And he just uh, writes very briefly, Mr. Artin has just given me a copy of the IMA alumnus May 1981 issue. I'm circulating it to all members of the management committee. Please accept our congratulations on winning the award for scholastic performance. If possible, get, please get a copy of the photograph that appears in this issue so that we can publish it in fragrance. Congrats once again and kind regards. And this was just the first of many such handwritten notes. Every single thing that you did, you, re you received a little note of appreciation, right? And I think I was not the only one. I can assure uh, you know that every single one out here must be having those little handwritten notes somewhere in their uh, files. And that was something truly amazing about the man. Uh, I mean, there were more such notes. And, uh, you know, uh, way back in uh, 1986, um, Ms. Mrs. Narayanan may remember this. Uh, he was traveling to Darjeeling with uh, Mrs. He's Narayanan. He's listening in. Mrs. Yeah. Narayanan, welcome. Aarti, welcome. Ashwini, welcome. And that is the only time I actually I very briefly met Aarti and Ashwini. Uh, they were on the way to Darjeeling and I was posted in Calcutta. So I went to the station uh, just to see if everything was okay for their trip. And I'd taken a little bag of mangoes for them to eat. And I gave to them and just said hello to him. And sure enough, when they got back to uh, Madras, there was again that little handwritten note saying thank you. <laughs> and when I met him next, there was again that uh, he remembered. And he had this wonderful memory for you know everything. And he remembered to say thank you for just getting the mangoes. The girls really enjoyed the mangoes. Um, my last uh, meeting with him was in June of 2019. 
and uh, Lakshmi and I had gone to Chennai to invite uh, close family members for our daughter's wedding. So we met him and Mrs. Narayanan because it had been such a long time since we met them and we wanted to invite them to Shilpa's uh, wedding. <clears throat> I mean, stepping into their uh, home at the manor was like being back at home. There was so much of warmth and affection and so many memories being exchanged. It was all so, so, uh, you know, easy as a, as a way of interaction. And we're just overwhelmed by the warmth and affection. Uh, he told me he wouldn't be able to make it to Bangalore for the wedding. But, you know, I, I, I didn't ex uh, expect it, but he remembered. And that again was that little note from him saying congratulations, uh, congratulations to Shilpa and Chiro, wishing them uh, luck in their wedding and so on and so forth. So he, he was just uh, amazing in the way he remembered and took the time out to make those little gestures, actually. So uh, there are many, many more uh, memories, but I will stop for now uh, to allow others to continue to, to celebrate, uh, you know, the life of this wonderful man. Thank, thank you, Sita. Uh, uh, MS, next is you, but I think Ravich Chandran has to catch a flight, so shall we invite him to speak? MS? Yeah, it's fine if uh, Ravi Chandran is online. I yeah, because it, it's only one o'clock uh, in the middle, middle of the night in Sydney, so you can wait a little. Ravi, you are muted. Ravi, you are muted. Unmute your mic. Uh, unmuted. Unmuted. Hi. Uh, good day to all of you in whichever corners of the world that you are. Thank you, Balram, for that uh, wry humor to start the day for me. Thanks, MS. Okay. Um, Mr. Narayanan, Nari, for us, boss man, many of us called him boss man, is for me an enigma. I spent just uh, seven years in Ponds between 1974 to 1981. And uh, out of that, just uh, three years at the head office. First year, it actually, many of you would, may not know, I was actually recruited from the Institute for Finance and Accounts. After a year or so, I decided that that's not going to be my cup of tea. I'll come to that later. Then he absorbed me in marketing, sales, and I quit when I was head of sales. Even full seven years because Indianization happened during that time. Like... Uh, Mr. Kannan Sitaram said about uh, Unilever taking over, Indianization was another very, very churning moment in Ponds. Coming to Mr. Narayanan himself, I think I said enigma. Enigma because I don't know how to describe him. I mean, after 1981, my touch with him has been very, very few, except once in 1994, when I personally invited him to Bangalore for a Rotary a presentation he accepted came over i hosted him and that's the last i saw him actually 1994 so in those seven years and in the formative years of me and in the initial years of mr narayanan who was absolutely a colossus in the company i should say that uh, my memory of him was an enigma guru or god Balram said i think it summarized in apt words what i had in my mind to say I think he was both, to me, combined a guru and a god. Guru because he taught in every motion of his little finger, every word that he spoke, and every gesture of his, which is to lift his eyebrows at something, which, uh, you know, you wonder what happened. You, did you say something wrong? Did you say something very right? It was a combination of warmth. It was a combination of anticipation. It is a combination of many feelings. I don't know whether fear is included in that, that evoked in me, and that's why it's, it's, uh, uh, he is an enigma. And at least for me, I don't know, I think we used to discuss this before within the group that uh, we've all shared. We used to regurgitate those meanings, the, the, the statements or those uh, gestures, and then try to understand the deeper meanings and we came up with many, many deeper meanings as to what it could mean and learned from those things. That's not something that is easy. And it happened in every interaction. 
there was a note culture that mr kangan sitaraman said oh my god he was a master of notes in those days of no emails and no nothing i still remember the warm to teach you used to send those notes personal notes other than the company performance oriented one i remember 1980 when i bought my car with a company loan the first day i drove to the car i had a note on my table just four lines saying ravi congrats on acquiring a car i hope to ride with you sometime so you know that sets him apart as someone who understood what each one was doing at that point of time and then seeing a way to recognize that to create a sense of togetherness the family joint family that you mentioned and therefore to work harder at anything that he threw at you which he did many times not just the job but he threw many things at you other than the job i think with the group we discussed that at least the three instances in my career of seven years when he threw at me things which are very very offline first in 1976 during indianization he asked me to be the back office for all the data generation for presenting to um earns not earns and um what is that balram um the ministry of commerce yes of... yeah minister commerce and also our consultant ministry uh, to of... that rbi yeah. yes and then the the second time well the third time i remember very well the last two months of mine when he asked me to prepare a complete presentation to be presented to the cp in board in 1981 february or march on how to expand the export opportunities in order to meet the obligations from the indianization and uh, ah in between of course the uh, second one which i think has been mentioned the pondicherry the pondicherry uh, locating a factory land for a pondicherry and getting it started in 27 days or something like that my role was to find the 18 days my role was to, yeah my role was to find the land 18 days my role was to find the land i was the area radio sales manager or something like that at the time and you know these are things that taught you different facets of management different ways of thinking about how to develop as an individual and so on i'll just end by saying four things that it took away from him in those brief seven years attention to detail meticulous planning flawless execution recognition recognize success i think these are four things that i took away at every point of time from any interaction that i had and the personification of all these four was the sales conferences in those days every management trainee was given the next year sales conference uh to be organized so um i joined in 74 75 or 76 i organized you know the amount of work that you do at that time with all senior members of pawns which is rt tony and mr narayan and himself and the agency and culminating in the final awards night was a personification of these four things attention to detail meticulous planning flawless execution recognize success and after that he used to call and ask for the learnings in his room and you know i used to think of it as a sanctum sanctorum his room you enter his room at his bidding you never entered on your own at least those days and you never knew what would be expected and but he used to call you and then said okay tell me what you learned and he used to then summarize all the mistakes that we made but in a beautiful way without hurting you and the successes that we created and end up motivating you to try better and achieve better he to me was an enigma of course a great human being a good mentor which we couldn't recognize it as a mentor that way but we learned a lot i am overwhelmed when i heard the news i was overwhelmed when i heard the news he passed away not that i had too many personal interactions with him but he shaped my initial corporate life and the subsequent successes many of the successes that i had was based on the learnings that he imparted 
Thank you, Mr. Narayanan. Rest in peace. I'm younger, but I can say God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, Yamas, uh, uh, are you ready to take on? Hello. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, when, when, when I told my wife, Lalita, that uh, we not, Mr. Narayan had passed away, her spontaneous reaction was that it felt like someone in the family had passed away. If that is the re reaction of a spouse, imagine how it was for those who actually knew Mr. Narayan in the 80s to the 90s. It genuinely felt like a family pawns, the pawns of those days. It was recognized by others as well. I remember a colleague from Unilever, one of the Unilever uh, companies overseas, said Pons felt like a company warm and fuzzy, like a teddy bear. Uh, in contrast to another company, which I won't name, but which he called to a shark. <laughs> and like any family, it was always hard to see people go. You know, anytime anybody actually left the company, it was it felt a seismic event. People didn't, you didn't see any reason why somebody would leave pawns and go somewhere else. It was a unique culture. But today is not about mourning a loss, but about celebrating a life. And I'm going to be, in, take, be indulgent and um, take you down, as the cliche goes, on a meandering walk down some every lane. Uh, we, and as we all know, went to Loyola College in Madras. At that time, though not in the same year, there were actually three Narayanans actually one Narayan and two, uh, two Narayans and one Narayan. V Narayan, who was um, an IS officer, his father was also like Mr. Narayan's uh, father, an ICS officer. J Narayan, um, some of you may know from I, uh, I, I, ITC and then Shaw Wallace. And confusingly, all three were known as Nari. So you can only imagine what it would have done to the heads of those cheese bro pawns people who really struggled to understand what his name actually was. You, frequently we receive correspondence addressed to Nari Narayanan, or as the Americans say, I can't quite do the accent, the Nari, Nari Anan, or something of that nature. They genuinely didn't know how to, what his real name was. It didn't matter. We, the, one of his colleagues uh, at, at college, V Narayanan, actually said, he re recollected that Vien was very welcoming and nice to him, despite being several years a senior. No surprises there, and a harbinger of things to come. Vien regularly played tennis, as all of us know, and he's also very fond of cricket. Uh, maybe that had something to do with the fact that we always used to take a banner advertising Pond's Dream Flat out for the Madras Test match. Um, often, uh, the banner would be behind the bowler's arm at one end. I remember in the summer of 1990, he and I found ourselves in London uh, one afternoon, and we'd finished all our meetings, and we spent a fine afternoon in the sunshine watching uh, an Indian team collapse and lose a test match, though we did enjoy a young lad named Sachin Tindulkar score some magnificent boundaries. Wayne once told me a story of how cricket played a part in his early career in Unilever, or Lever Brothers, as I think it might have been known in those days. Uh, Wien was one of the early cross postings from Lever Brothers India to UK. This was at a time when many in the company, and possibly English society more generally, still retained aspects of colonial and imperial attitudes towards Indias and Indians. It was easy to be treated, I imagine, and feel like an outsider or an imposter, somebody who didn't belong. And then one day it all changed for Mr. Narayan. This is how it happened. There was a last minute withdrawal in a company cricket match and Vien was asked to fill in. He did, he scored a century. He was never treated the same way ever again. The progress on the cricket field was not the only reason he was held in high esteem in Lever later and then. On another occasion, Vien recounted to me how as a brand manager in the UK, came up with the idea of correlating Persil, uh, the detergent sales, with water hardness across the UK. As a result of his analysis, there was a region-specific reformulation and relaunching of the detergent, which I think um, still continues to today. He made a lasting impression on Unilever. Many of us are from Pons and we know the impression he made on us, but he made an equally lasting impression on Unilever 
And in future, in later years, I came across so many people who were former Lever Brothers uh, employees who knew and recognized and, and, and were in awe of his, of his abilities. And of course, it culminated him being appointed as a director of Hindustani. Ramachandran mentioned that presentation um, in 1981. In the summer of 1981, he traveled as the chairman and managing director of Homes, to make a presentation to the board of Cheesebro. It's perhaps the most important presentation he ever made, and one that um, I think set the company firmly on an envisaged path. 40 years old since that presentation, and I still remember the first three slides in which he demonstrated to Ralph Ward and his lieutenants how, and these are the exact words he used, in the three years since Ponds India was established, the new company has sold more and earned more than in the previous 30 years. BN being BN gave credit to, for this success to, again, I quote, and this is from memory, but I'm sure these are the right words, to the bold and visionary decision made by the board of CP Inc to dilute equity. He then went out to set out a business strategy for the company. That presentation was a tour de force. It proved to be irresistible. Later on, he told me that after he finished, there was stunned silence for a minute in the boardroom of CP Inc. And then applause broke out. One of the vice presidents asked him for a copy of his speaking notes. Think about it. A tiny little subsidiary in India proposing to do what no other subsidiary of CP Inc. anywhere in the world would have thought of or even dared to think of, to strike out on their own in new businesses. He returned to India with an approval to embark on a park, path that completely transformed the fledgling company and led to the many businesses that were established in the years to come. Vian was the ultimate strategic thinker. Very earlier on, he said, he didn't agree with Igor Ansoff and the powers that be, that the, uh, the gurus of business strategy of those days, that the key strategic question was what business are we? Instead, we had argued, what is more important is how good a business are we? He then took this thinking further. He asked, what does being good for a company making and selling cosmetics in India mean? He answered by stating that the aim of this company, strategic decisions would be to, to, again, I quote his words, generate employment and earn foreign exchange. And there you go. Brilliantly encapsulated in six words was a statement of strategic intent, a business plan, and a roadmap for the future. I could go on. Uh, I have many more memories to share, but I will finish with a joke that I remember we had told one of our foreign visitors. Uh, it might have been Bill Schmidt or Ennio Perukni. I, I can't. As he told it, the leader of the Soviet Union, it might have been Khrushchev, was visiting the US. And in the White House spotted a red telephone. That he asked, it's a hotline to hell, said the answer, was the answer. Intrigued, Khrushchev asked if he could pick five. Right, sure, go ahead, said the American president. Khrushchev picked it up, asked to speak to Stalin, was connected immediately. And he spoke to a few minutes and hung up. And he asked how much it cost. And the operator said $10,000. Khrushchev said, that's fine, but this is a wonderful phone. Can I borrow it and take it back to the Kremlin? And so the American president said, yes. So Christian goes back to Kremlin with the phone, excitedly calls all the Politburo to his office and they call Stalin and Ivan the Terrible and Peter the Great and all the others in hell have a long conversation and then finally hang up. And then Christian goes to the operator and says, how much did that call cost? And Mr. Narayanan provided the answer, one ruble, it's a local call. <laughs> Um, Mr. Narayan was probably the smartest person I've ever met, the most inspiring leader. It was a privilege to have been associated with him. Thank you for this opportunity to share some memories. And I look forward to hearing the memories of everyone else on this call. Thank you, Yamas. And, uh, good night whenever you want to sleep. Uh, Pandit, uh, can you come on? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's very difficult uh, to condense memories of 18 years and learnings of a, that have lasted a lifetime uh, into just uh, 
10 minutes. I'll try um, to be brief, but pardon me if I'm uh, rambling along. Um, and what I'm going to talk about are the leadership and management lessons uh, that I learned that I think are something every leader, every manager could learn. And I learned it uh, from VN. Let me start right at the beginning. And I joined as a management trainee in 1975. And at that time, VN was the marketing manager and he used to sit in a corner room on the floor Next room was RTs and next room was the brand room, which I shared with Niku and uh, Sundaram beginning and later Ravi moved in. So in those days, we then took a great interest. And, you know, as they say, the first five years of a child is the most formative years. And I think those initial years of your work life are the most impressionable and formal, uh, form, uh, impressionable and formative years in your work life. I remember the initial few months were sales stores and I did my first tour of Karnataka and you were expected to write a sales report and VN would make meticulous notes on the margins and the report would come back to you. And a couple of days later, he called me over to his room for a chat. So the questions were all about where does the salesperson live? What is his family like? How many children does he have? Where do they study? So virtually for most of them, I had a blank answer. So he came back. Next door was Andhra Pro. And this time I said, I'm going to learn everything about the salesperson. <laughs> and submitted a report, again called for a meeting. So I knew everything about salespersons in Andhra Pradesh, but this time all the questions were about the uh, uh, 80s. What are his investment? What are the lines does he have? When did he start his business? So completely out of syllabus questions. So his, the training he imparted was through these very incisive probing questions. And much later I realized this is what coaching and mentoring is all about. You are not told you go and look for this, go and look for that and go and look for that. But by stimulating, asking powerful questions, you stimulate the individual's thinking and also develop a sense of curiosity. So coaching, mentoring and having a sense of curiosity are very powerful leadership qualities. And the second part of the training was preparing his presentations. And you heard from Sita and Ravi and MS, those days, whether it was an address to the MMA, Advertising Club of India, or a presentation to Chisbro Pons executives, he would ask us to work on his presentation. And that was his way of developing in us how to structure your thoughts, how to structure your ideas, how to present them very effectively. And listening to him making those presentations, you realized how communication is such an important aspect of leadership. And today, uh, you know, it's all well recognized that leaders are good leaders, those who have a very powerful communication, one-on-one -on -one as well as in a group. And the third aspect which stays with me even today is meetings with advertising agencies. And I recall that both Lintas and HDA used to, the, the uh, CEOs, the chairman, along with the whole retinue of managers used to come and sit through the presentations. And once Subhash Goshal, the chairman of HDA has told me, I brought in all my branch managers because I want them to learn from these meetings. I want them to see how we handle these meetings. It was a great learning experience. And those learnings of the initial years have stayed on. There was a time in my late twenties and thirties, I was sometimes impatient saying, why are we not making these changes faster? Why are we not making these moves quickly? Later on reflecting back, I realized that was because VN had a deep sense of judgment on people. And he had a great sense of 
empathy and towards employees who had stayed long in the organization and employees who were sincere um, to the organization. He did not want to disrupt and dislocate them in any manner whatsoever. So he had a deep people sense, which again has stood through me um, in, in my years later on. Ponds was a culture where dignity and respect for the individual, whether you're an office person, uh, attendant bringing you coffee, tea, or whether you're a vice president or a factory worker, that was a hallmark of our organization. Dignity and respect for the individual. And today, some of the great organizations are recognizing that's such a key, key aspect of leadership. VN was well known for uh, his delegation capabilities to delegate and trust people. And I had a personal experience. Uh, I was reporting to him between directly between 1988 to 1990, 1991 as head of sales and marketing. And when I took over that role, uh, our PP business was in a difficult uh, situation with a huge failure of the Pond's toothpaste and tooth powder uh, launch. All he told me was, and it's in your hands, bring the business back to health. That's it. He did not ask me for an action plan. Every, any other leader would have jumped in, asked for, give me a roadmap, give me an action plan, give me a weekly uh, monitoring of how you are progressing. Not once. I would send him a monthly note on where we are. He would appreciate it within his typical handwritten uh, notes saying, great work, go on. That's it. He left it completely to me to handle it. And he strongly believed it. So let me conclude by saying that the values and the leadership competencies that I developed early on in bonds and over those 18 years stayed with me in various leadership positions for the next 25 years. So if I have passed this on to younger generation of leaders, I think I would have just done justice to his legacy. And through those leaders, his legacy is perpetuated. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Pandit. Uh, uh, next is Frank, Ravi Shankar. Uh, Eki has come on. Ravi, can I ask Eki whether he wants to speak? I let me uh, first listen to a few people. Okay, all right. Yeah. Ravi? Ravi Shankar. Please unmute. Am I audible now? Yeah. So thank you very much, sir, for giving me the opportunity to uh, be present today in this very, very memorable event. Uh, VN, the most charismatic and positive person I have ever met in my life. And, yes. Um, a man with a golden voice never talks on a demotivating way to anyone. Never, never. People come out of his room after a brief meeting with him, fully charged, fully motivated, with a lot of positive energy. When we go in, we would be very anxious to meet him. But when <laughs> we come out, we come out very positively from that meeting. Even at this stage, I remember what is positivity because of this pandemic period. Positivity is the thing which keeps, which can keep us moving. But we have never seen such a person in my life who was full of positivity. He never ever spoke negative about anyone or anything. This is my experience. People will die to do anything for him. If he calls somebody at the lowest level, he will. He is totally non-bureaucratic. He will call the lowest person if a particular thing has to happen and that person will do anything for him. So this is the kind of personality, the charismatic leader. The second major uh, observation I had is concern for every employee. It was visible on day one when I joined. When I joined, he crafted my seven day in the, um, uh, induction program. They used to call it as an induction program those days. 
he personally hand crafted my integration program and the seven days first day he made sure ravi you have to go and sell one dozen of dream flower tark in yano then you will know what is what the, what does it mean to sell a dozen of tark for the salesman to sell the first day was that the second day he asked me to sit in front of every uh, person in the hall who were uh, finance division clerical cadre people and at the end of the day he saw me sitting with one very notorious person and chatting for about one hour and he called me to his room at the end of the day said what did you talk <clears throat> with him do you know about his family that exactly what pandit was saying how many children he has got so he he just indirectly hinted me that you should know the person but not get into his culture so he was a little bit concerned about cultural aspects of gossip so he indirectly gave me a hint that don't fall for that but try to understand that personality better so this is the big learning at the end of the second day he gave me so later he crafted my entire career in ponds even though i was little distant from him but he was keeping every manager in his mind while he was crafting their career plan i was i was sitting in the factory as a plant accountant and uh, suddenly i got a call from mr mr vishwanath and saying that you have to go to kanla for setting up the unit in kanla so i was taken a bag a plant accountant looking a plant manager so i asked uh, so he said that what kind of credentials i have to be a plant manager hmm. then he said no go and meet mr narayan he will tell you first thing he said was that ravi i made this decision mainly because i know that if i put a person to a swimming pool he will know how to swim so i don't have any hesitation that you will do a good job and this is what coming back to pandit's point of trust the moment he believes in a person's integrity and his competence completely delegates and the trust carries the performance because you are totally committed behind him now i have seen mr narayanan as a great strategist and one aspect which i would like to highlight is the corporate governance he was the epitome of corporate governance he mr balraman knows very well that he follows both the letter and the spirit of the law and uh, he never ever made anything extra profitability by bending the law he will never take a decision he will be very conservative ultra conservative in making sure whatever profitability we make is due under the law as well as the spirit of the law so this is something which phenomenally carried and the entire uh, the valuation of the company he used to call me subsequently after quite a few uh, uh, years i met him in ernstan and uh, he called me ravi i want to come and see ernstan and one day and he came it was a big office in senate of road very near by his house he had come prepared for that meeting fully and he was narrating clearly what kind of market capitalization of all the companies where he is on the board he gave a number a number of 200000 crores and he was saying that he he had carried an article published about him that he is a number one independent director in india and the mark by virtue of the market capitalization of those companies in which he is on the board fully prepared for the meeting in ansan so all and if you you may all recall that bond shares were listed at 20 rupees but it grew up to 1500 rupees over a period of 7 years and every household were able to conduct the marriage of their children when they had originally invested the money uh, in pound shares this is a kind of love for entire stakeholders whether it is a pune who is working in uh, secretarial division or the largest shareholder chief pro pound or the ordinary shareholder and his objective is every year show 25 to 30% year on year growth he will never compromise it even if one business division doesn't deliver it he will call me ravi what is a gap and he will immediately call janas markun or somebody in geneva 
and make sure that he will plan ahead that kind of additional profits be executed during the year this is the kind of person who was keeping the interest of shareholders in mind that is why the market capitalization bonds was the number one cosmetic company in india with market capitalization those days now i want to come to vns as a human being somebody also mentioned about that as a human being when my deaf and dumb sister got married to another deaf and dumb person he came to know because there was an article in uh, one tamil tamil magazine that was in the basically in the uh, front page itself the cover page so he didn't know about this particular facet of my personal life i was only a junior manager at the time he called me ravi what is this can you narrate this entire story how it happened so he was spending at least half an hour with me understanding my family and why my sister was not talking and all that so that is one thing and even recently i used to meet him in the uh, temples and whenever i used to meet him in the temples i used to be charged again like what i used to be as a management trainee i used to be full of enthusiasm my wife will be also with me my wife also got into him he, my wife used to say a man with a golden voice to everybody so he was saying that you know there was a common friend who had, who had a miracle uh, in income tax assessment uh, and uh, the common friend had told me about this instance and he used to also uh, be on the as an internal auditor of the companies in which mr narayanan was on the board many companies in chennai this person is also internal auditor and he is totally taken in by his competence and the kind of he was telling that day that but for him i would not have been the best internal auditor as of today but he had a miracle in income tax department and he had told me mr narayan said ravi in the in the temple in front of the shivalinga he was saying ravi you know what happened to sri ram yes sir i know that i i heard about that miracle then he's just that was the last word he spoke to me that was one year ago before the pandemic avan andri edu asayadu he was telling it in tamil and you are seeing the god and you are saying nothing moves in this world without his will this is the word he used and i came back and today even today it is a prophetic word the whole pandemic and the kind of distress which we are all going through this is the word which i keep reminding me again and again that nothing moves in this world without his will this is what i want to say and my learnings with him and he has been a god to me i never treat god and guru differently he is my god thank you very much most well said ravi we all agree with you totally and uh, na, na, nandu is remarkable in his enthusiasm to come and speak uh, though i do not know whether he really worked with krishna rana uh, good uh, th- thank you uh, mr bb and thank you for all the speakers uh, before me uh, i learned so much about mr b and listening to you uh, you are right my association with him was very brief uh starting from when i was a summer trainee in 1981 to when i joined in 1982 and i was 18 months in the head office uh and it was remarkable even as a uh, manage as a summer trainee he had time to sit through my reports and presentations and comment in great detail to help us develop in subsequent times i saw him at close quarters during presentations meetings sales conferences the speeches uh, that sita uh, mentioned earlier uh, including the one on the census of 1981 which i still have a copy of in the cupboard behind me uh, because it was so well laid out uh, he left a deep impression on me although our association was brief and the last time i met him was in 1983 so that's 37 years ago uh he was you know he 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 so i'll be very brief therefore he uh his deep understanding of business his care for people 
uh, compassion, all of which came together as wisdom and charisma, which is how we felt it. And you've all talked about his communication, his attention to detail, his care for people. You know, many years later, Jim Collins talked about the concept of level five leadership. And I believe Mr. Narayanan, Mr. Vien, describes that extremely well. Uh, he had a steely determination, business understanding, together with a great emphasis and focus on building people, building the organization, uh, building the culture. And that's why we are all here, because in some way he has touched all of us as people, as managers, and as leaders. So the culture, uh, Sitaram mentioned, the culture of character and competence. Uh, throughout my working life outside of Ponds, and I've been working in India and outside, Mr. Vien has always been my inspiration and my role model of what this role model of a leader should be. Uh, many is the time I have had uh, difficult situations and uh, a little bit like Ekalavya and uh, Dronacharya, I have said to myself, what would Mr. Vien do in a situation like this? And that has helped guide my thinking. Uh, so uh, it was for me a, uh, uh, a great thing when you invited me to rejoin the Pons family. It is one of my greatest regrets that I did not in fact uh, reconnect with him in the last 37 years and uh, say thank you. Uh, so I just wanted this, these two or three minutes to say that through you to him and his family. We will remember him. Uh, he will live on in our memories, but more importantly, he will live on through us as leaders and as Mr. Pandit mentioned, the people who we have influenced around the world. And that leadership model fundamentally comes from Mr. BN. So his legacy will live on. Thank you. Do you all re recognize that our uh, leadership series is uh, our Guru Dakshina to him? I, I wrote to him and he wrote back. He actually dictated it to N. Shankar's secretary who said uh, Mr. Narayanan dictated this on the phone. And uh, so, uh, so it, it, this letter is unsigned. So he said, look, I'm very happy you are doing it. And uh, you know, I will, I will not be able to listen, but can you send me hard copies of articles? I sent some, the first is five, six uh, to his house some time ago. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Narayanan was learning all the time, whether you met him in his room or whether you traveled with him on a car to Pondicherry or whether you traveled with him in a train to Kodakana. Uh, no, wherever <laughs> you, you spent a little time with him, uh, he taught you both by example and also by asking questions, never being cu curious, but never being offensive. Amazing individual, amazing individual. Uh, next, I think, is uh, Atul. Yep, thank you. Atul, again, is uh, someone who had spent a lot of time with Mr. Narayan. Atul is someone, again, Mr. Narayan valued very highly. So, Atul, I'm sure thank you have you. lots of uh, very, very high value experiences to share. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balraman. And first of all, I want to address Mrs. Narayanan, Aarti, and Ashwini. You have our sincere condolences. Thank you for sharing Mr. Narayanan with us. And uh, today we share our thoughts. And, uh, I'm getting a little emotional, so I'm gonna try and make this filmy rather than get it emotional. I was actually with Fawns only seven years, but it feels like seven lifetimes um, in a positive way because it's, it's stayed with me. I tried to um, crystallize what I believe he meant. There's some echo of some mute. What he meant or he left behind as a legacy forever. And, and to me, it was the fact that he epitomized empathy, being engaging and excellence, tried to keep it to a theme like he would. Empathy, first of all, we've all talked about it. He, he truly sensed what consumers, distributors, shareholders wanted. But my experience is 
before and after leaving ponds or in ponds and after leaving ponds was the empathy of understanding what we needed like a father i it started from way back when i joined ponds um i started at a princely salary of 1100 rupees uh, and and that that was a good salary back then but some 8 months later i was getting married to my high school sweetheart ritika and uh, you know we were worried about how we would manage we never had to ask for anything my salary was doubled before i even got married and i have many stories of empathy but um, but the ones that stick with me are we were coming back from the factory one day when uh, mr narayanan made a detour to visit the family of one of the cleaners who was bereaved he, he, someone talked earlier about how he cut through barriers of class and age and and you know just made himself one with everyone and it was to me it was then and today the hallmark of the humility and respect that that he has uh, he had for everyone and he modeled for us all the empathy continued even after and i want to recall an incident uh, mrs narayanan might remember we were visiting madras many years after we uh, left ponds and we met at the the hotel where we had a conference trident ritika was with me and um because we were on a business trip she only had western clothes and she said look i feel bad that i'm in madras i'm just wearing a dress and next morning mrs narayanan sent her a beautiful silk sari empathy ran in the family so i i want to move from empathy and in, in keeping with the time limit because i could go on on empathy for all of my time to his next great virtue and strength that he left for all of us and that was how engaging he was when his big eyes locked you knew he was engaged you know they they talk about people who have this uncanny ability to go deep one on one as if you're the only one in the world and that was his and i could see that ability not just with us but also with the the suppliers and vendors we had i mean it's amazing someone talked earlier about i think pandit talked about or ravi talked about how the heads of uh the agencies i recall several meetings with subhash goshal ram ray alec chandru of obm and i know uh mrs chandrashekar might also be on the call kittu of metal box i mean it was like a magnificent jugal bandi these were not suppliers to us these were partners in the truest sense and the deep respect and affection they had for uh vn just came shining through and and, and it's unquestionable that we got we punched far more than our weight just because we got the best brains working in sync for us and they did that because they liked respected and trusted vn and that's another learning that has stayed with me he would say in any relationship you start by liking them then you go to respect them and finally trust so um even though we were far apart in age and stature I feel very privileged that I I I hope I had such a relationship with him. And as I said we were together for a short 7 years in which I was away in sales for half the time but over the years we stayed in touch not as often as I'd like and I felt close enough to call him for instance when I left and I was working at American Express and I said sir may I poach Kanan because I hired Kanan away from Ponds and um he was obviously very graceful but um just the last time we saw him uh, we visited mr and mrs narayanan in their cenotaph road house and we were talking about the krishna conscious path that uh, my wife and i are now trying to follow and mrs narayanan pointed immediately to a small radha krishna statue in their living area and recalled that many years ago we had gifted it to them this is the kind of genuine love and engagement that both mr and mrs narayanan felt for all it's it it was not made up it was not superficial it was deep authentic and genuine and as i say that's what stays with me and my final tribute to him is around excellence again so much has been written or said but he had an unbroken record in our industry of profitable growth he was entrepreneurial before the term became fashionable 
finding ways to what we now call address uh, or expand the TAM, the total addressable market with Russian exports, shoes, thermometers, whatever else. But his greatest mark of excellence in my mind and the minds clearly of everyone in this call was the investment in people. We went toe to toe with the best in India, got top talent year after year. He got the best and made them better by creating the culture of character and competence. And, and you know, this came through not in words, but in the way we behaved and modeled behavior for others. I recall early on, he said to MS and me, you're not in competition with each other. Your goal is to make yourself redundant in your job. That, that's so different from most other companies where it's a two horse race from the moment people join. So this kind of best people in a nurturing environment made for excellence every day. And, and I just recall whenever VN called or walked in as he would often directly into the band room, it was electrifying. I think Ravi Shankar said accurately, there was a little anxiety, but the excitement of learning and when, we, when he left, it was almost like we'd had a mini MBA in those few minutes. He modeled skills and behavior, input and output, but most important for me personally, material and spiritual progress. His office was built in with a temple and that has been my ideal since. And so as we say goodbye to him today, the only words that come to me are the lyrics of to serve with love. Mm -hmm. How can we thank someone who has figuratively taken us from crayons to perfumes? It isn't easy, and I'm not going to sing, but I will try to sir with love. Om Shanti. Thank you, Atul. Uh, he is still with us. He is with us in, uh, in, in the way he has trained us, in, in the characters. He has uh, instilled in us and in all the goals that we carry in his name forward. And uh, I, I think uh, Candy had got up <laughs> very early in the morning uh, to be here and to speak about Mr. Narayanan. And Candy is again someone who had worked closely with him. Uh, Candy, may I invite you to share your thoughts? Thank you, Baram. Um, it is indeed... Um, Difficult and it was quite a shock um, when we heard about uh, Mr. Vian's passing away. It's, um, it brought back a lot of memories, a lot of the things that happened, uh, you know, and, and the way he kind of guided and molded certainly me. It also brought back, you know, um, in a way like what Nandu said, wish I had spent even more time, wish I had gone back and um, met him more often. And, you know, for me, it was, um, you know, as many of you know, my, my dad passed away on 4th of January and this happened like a few weeks later. It was like, you know, on one hand, kind of my father who kind of guided me in my early life and then kind of my father who guided me in my professional life, kind of both passed away in the same month. And um, it was a, it made me reflective, it made me think. And certainly something that um, um, for me is, is personally very emotional. So, uh, you know, obviously a lot of things have going to be the same kind of experiences that all of you have already mentioned. I first met Mr. Vien um, actually along with Deepak Chandani in when we started our summer job together in 1979, actually with Atul and MS as our guides. Um, and we were, you know, 20, 21 years old at that time. And obviously, you know, we were highly ambitious, uh, thought a lot of ourselves and 
it was a very interesting experience because suddenly you met a leader who was so impressive. We, we, we met him twice, once we, when we joined and once before we kind of left our summer training. And at the same time was so interested in you, had tremendous amount of humility, didn't tell us what to do, you know, told us how to th think by asking questions. And it just went back. I mean, as soon as I left in the summer of 79, I knew this was the company I was gonna join, right? I, I, I knew that immediately. It, it didn't, you know, take me a lot of time to, to make that decision, it, it was obvious. And it was because of these meetings I had with, um, with VM. Then I joined in 1980 um, and I was mostly in sales, but luckily in, in, in Madras, in Chennai. So therefore I met him quite frequently and I was there between 1980 till 1990 or 10 years um, doing various kind of, I was in sales, but I've met him very frequently. Whether it was on travels to the markets, um, visiting distributors, um, meeting him in the office, um, talking to Sita. Actually, he mentioned about all the speeches he wrote. I was very envious of Sita in those years because of the time he was able to spend with um, with and he and I, Sita and I used to talk about it. And um, so I learned a lot secondhand as well through Sita. Um, at the same time, you know, somewhat envious, but also learning a lot. He, he was influential uh, on me in a number of ways, and I'll come to that in a minute. But he was also influential in the way I would say I tried to be a leader to a lot of the people, right? Because Pons was this kind of a machine of getting this top class talent coming in and lots of them used to come through sales and typically through South region. And so I interacted with a lot of people over the years and I tried to in a way imitate him. Never, I never could, but at least I was inspired and I was trying to be like the way I think I saw Mr. Vian lead. In um, 1986, 87, when the Leavers takeover happened, I think he was extremely helpful. Uh, Sita spoke about the lunch we had in Connemara with Keki and, and the way he positioned us for success within Leavers um, was tremendous. I moved over to Leavers uh, in 1990 as branch manager in South along soon to be joined by PKV who can see on, on, the, on the call as well. And we used to often talk PKV and I about, um, about VN, right? Because we were in levers now and um, we would often talk about how can we bring that culture into levers? And we tried very hard to bring that within at least the South region in the branch, uh, treating people the same way, trying to create the same kind of culture. Uh, I left Levers in 97 and between 90, 93 and 97, I was in Mumbai in marketing manager and detergents. I met him when I came to Chennai. I used to often uh, say hello to him. After 97, I left India I think I met him three, three, two, three times after that. A couple of times in, uh, in Madras Cricket Club when I used to go back to Chennai and try and meet friends. Uh, always the same, even if he was in shorts and no top drinking a, you know, having a drink in the locker room in Madras. His voice, his speech, the way he would address me was still the same, you know, without his tie and suit and everything else. And my respect for him remains the same. And when I told uh, about this to Radhika, um, I mean, Radhika felt really, really sad as well because she knows how much he helped us. 
during our early marriage years, how he formed the way I was a professional. You know, there are two aspects. One is kind of how we, how we built kind of the business model that many of us have tried to emulate. Um, I have tried very hard to be what I call, really think about breakthrough and being aspirational. Clearly that came before these words were management jargon came from, from VN to really shoot for the moon, think about what that would take to get there. Uh, this culture, which many of you have spoken about of character and competence. I mean, you know, um, even when I joined Coca-Cola um, and I kind of got into senior positions, I used to think very hard about, does this person have the character first? You know, before anything else. Um, and the way in the case of Coke, we used to say is, does he have Coke flowing through the veins of blood? So it was that if you have that character, then everything else comes and everything else you can, uh, you know, you, you can then build. And then treating people with that trust, with the respect, with empathy, and delegating enormous tasks on people and trusting them. So that's pretty much been kind of the business model that I've tried to follow. None of this is original. It all came from, from VN. And, and as Nandu, you mentioned, uh, if you look at good to great, in a way you could say, well, we were following that well before, right? <laughs> because we saw that role model in Mr. VN. Um, certainly, I mean, as a man, as a person, he was a tremendous thinker, deeply strategic, right? He wasn't... Um, he didn't think through only things that will happen. You know, um, we spoke, spoke about just now about how we used to get all these senior leaders on our side as stakeholders. This concept of stakeholder management, now again, back in fashion. I mean, this was what we were doing 40 years ago, right, in bonds. And that's um, that's kind of the far side and the strategic thinking that, that uh, VN had. As a person, very human, uh, very humble at the same time. What I really remember about him more than anything else, Ravi, um, you talked about the golden voice. I always remember not just motivating me, but inspiring me. It wasn't just telling me, you know, you're motivated to do this task. No, he inspired me to be a better person, a better manager, to, to lead. I mean, it was truly inspirational. And, and that's the kind of person um, I was. I missed this initial question, Balram, on this God or Guru. I missed it because I came a few minutes late. I was having difficulty in getting into Zoom. No, not because I didn't get up. It was because I was difficulty in getting in on the Zoom call. And, you know, there's a quote, it's by a Christian saint, who says, be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. And I think it's not about his being God or guru. I think he was what God meant him to be, and he set the world on fire. Not only for the people he met, like all of us, Certainly he did for us, but through us, and I think uh, Pandit, you mentioned this, through us, I think we've been able to try to do a fraction of that to others. And, and I think that's how his legacy goes far, far, far beyond ponds, far, far, far beyond this group of people. Uh, and he certainly, certainly from my perspective, set the world on fire. I'll remember him a lot, I, I really, uh, again, wish my heartfelt prayers um, to Mrs. Narayanan, the family, um, and for him and his, his soul. Um, thank you, Balram, for organizing this. No, not at all. You know, I, uh, I was, uh, in some context, I was telling him that uh, we owe Mother India a lot. Uh, she has given us everything, so we have to give back to India. He corrected me. He said, no, Balu, you owe it to the world. 
think of the world, not just India, he said. So there, there were a number of occasions he, uh, you know, uh, he gave us a, many of these nuggets of wisdom. Uh, he was generous. He was generous be, beyond anyone else I know. I mean, uh, I, you know, long ago, he called me and said, uh, why haven't you bought a house? I had not thought of buying a house. He said, go ahead and buy. You want money? I, I, I said, <laughs> I guess. He, he said, uh, we have a loan limit of 2 lakhs. You take 10 lakhs, he said. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. I, so I, I just came back to the factory. I was doing my work. About a month later, he called me and he was very upset. He said, why have you not done anything about buying a house? I, he was upset. I had not taken a housing loan. I, that I had not. So immediately the next week, I worked very hard and bought a house. So, I mean, Mr. Narayanan was very diff different in many, many ways. And uh, now we have uh, someone who worked uh, shoulder to shoulder with him in the most difficult of all the challenges that uh, he met that is in uh, Indianization of Pons and then uh, forming Pons India Limited. We are most lucky to have Eki Shirsagar here. Uh, Eki is someone whom we value as an elder, as, a, as part of our board, which set our uh, policies, principles, value systems, goals and ambitions. Eki, uh, most happy to have you. Well, I, it's a pity that we are meeting under these circumstances. I, one of the reasons, Malu, that I said I'll wait until I hear the others is that I hadn't, these are all faces who they may recognize me, but I had, they're older, but I can recognize most of them. I, I think uh, what I, you're absolutely right. I was going to say that my uh, first time I met Mr. V and Nari, as I called them, was in 1975. And I, it was in their brand new office. What's the name of that building? Fabun Mansion, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Uh, and uh, we, uh, you're right, Mr. Money. Some, of, well, most of you, might, some of you may have heard of him. He was the founder chairman. Yes. And uh, that office. I mean, he, I, my appointment as Ferguson's. I was. I went to meet them to give a, a look at them and submit a proposal. And uh, I was told I have to meet Mr. Money. So I met Mr. Money, and he spent a few minutes talking to me and coffee and all that. And then he said, look, I think you should really meet uh, Mr. Narayanan. So Nari walks in. And from then onwards, I think that is 1975, mid, early 75. We work very closely together. You're absolutely right. I'll uh, go the full circuit just now. I'll come, I should have come later. 1975, I was there at the Indianization of a branch of Cheeseborough Ponds which was in itself quite an uh, effort. And uh, convincing not really the authorities anywhere, but convincing Cheeseborough Pons. Uh, Balu, did you ever meet a man called Rolf, Rolf, Rolfshausen? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I must tell you the story. It's a, it's, I know it's a, a memorial, but still, this gentleman came, a typical Midwest uh, American, large, uh, with three huge suitcases and checked in the Konamara. So I was told. Not water, yes. <laughs> no, not only water. He got breakfast cereals and something else and something else. So next day, I Nari was very gentle with him as he was. I was never gentle. So I said, what are you doing? Are you going to feed us all? He said, no, I was told there's nothing available in this country. And uh, I said, well, you know, you've seen the results of these reports in India. Yeah, that's why we're very sad that we have to give away, you know, 60%. <laughs> anyway, so from then we worked together and then I was there, there for the birth of the company. And uh, I don't think any of you were there when in the room, when we spent endless hours, we used to spend all day going through the, you said not only the spirit, I'm not only the law, but also the letter, but the spirit. And the question came, we had to say to Spons India Limited. Uh, then the question was, should be with brackets, without brackets, believe it or not. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Right? And uh, uh, the reason why was that the marketing people said, you can't have brackets on a, uh, on a container, you know, or anywhere else. 
for a consumer product. And Nadi listened to us and uh, from one side, I said, look here, yeah, you know, one could talk to the uh, registrar and say, Sakar, give examples of Hindustan, lever, he doesn't say India, various other things, with brackets, without. And exactly what Pandit said, I think, saying that, look, let's stick to the letter this time and the spirit. This is what they want. We lose nothing. And he told the marketing guys, he said, look, this is your job. Get people to forget the Ponds India Limited. Think of the brand. That's what your task should be. The next task was forming the company, which is when I uh, uh, introduced uh, two of my friends. I think I hope, uh, well, uh, uh, Chaitan Manyar and uh, Dilip Udeshi. Chaitan did all the legal work, you know, everything. I helped him with that, of course, and uh, Dilip, the legal side, and his calm, he's still very calm and, uh, you know, uh, forceful in his own way. And we worked. And of course, the great Mr. V. Ramachandran, late, the tax expert, some of you may have met him, Ravi yeah. Mahasana met him anyway. All of us know him, yeah. Sorry? All of us know him, yeah. No, he was a tax and lawyer, but you know. So it was quite a team. And then, as you said, forming a team of your suppliers as well. The auditor, we had the great Mr. Narayalwala as the auditor of Buckley Boy. He was a grand man. He was a president of the institute. And oh, he, he his people used to ask him, it's, he used to say, why do you go and spend three days for the ponds, it's a small company. He said, no, no, I'm learning all the time. Look at, we have <laughs> our audit meetings, the board meetings, we really, it's fantastic. And he paid us all compliments on that. Therefore, coming back to this, he not only touched the advertising, but also us who are not in the marketing field. But uh, I found that here he was very, very, uh, he was very direct, very helpful. When we went to uh, to get the uh, approval, we had to get approvals from the control of capital issues. Uh, there's a problem of the, uh, the, the pricing, and at one stage, we had said, "Ah, you know, I'm not." The, the, the American said, "No, no, we want more." The guy said, "No, you can't get more." He said, "Then we'll pack up. We'll fight back up." So I said, "I had to calm. We, we both had to calm the Americans down." But later, well, anyway, that's another story. I won't go into that. But I think what I find is, you know, someone made the point, all of you made the point, corporate governance, long before the phrase became uh, a cliche, we, it, we did that. Nari actually made sure that our board meetings were genuine board meetings. As I said, it would last for two days. I remember a whole lot of people would ask me, and um, Chetan and Dilip, that how can you spend two days at a board meeting? Exactly like Mr. Nandel Bala, we said, well, we enjoy it, you know. And we said they not only have the board meeting and then an the evening, dinner, it was all, all great fun. So I think uh, what I feel again, when people talk about uh, corporate governance and the way things, we were doing in ponds 40 years ago at the board level, exactly what now SEBI is asking a whole lot of people to do. Now, you can say, how is that? Because of the man. Someone else, but I said, look, come on, let's just get on with it. These are all rigmarole. You don't need to follow it. And I think that's something which is left, for me, an indelible uh, impression, which is no matter what, spirit and letter of the law is important. And if all of you have done well, I think this is the other important point that I think every one of you who are in the company or left the company appear to have done brilliantly. All are heads of their companies or were heads of their companies or CEOs or some, some equivalent. And you still have, I think all of you believe that this is where it all started. And now I think uh, those who knew Nari would say actually the man who inspired him in, as far as this kind of thing was concerned, was Pierre Prakash Tandem, of the first chair, Indian chairman of Hindustan Diva. 
uh, which Tandon did what I think Nadi tried to do and succeeded better of creating a pool of people, taking young people, making them excellent, uh, excellent managers. I could go on and on, but uh, I think, uh, I don't think you really want to listen to me on this. I'd be, if somebody's ever writing history uh, of uh, Pons India, I'd be very happy to spend time with them because I think I was perhaps unique in that I was there at the birth, the Upanayanam that is going to the public issue, and then the marriage, when we married, it was married, uh, somewhat of a forced marriage. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the sun, Lever, I, you know, I know this is being recorded, but I don't think my friends at Lever would object. That's okay. That's okay. We, we joke with them, yeah. No, I, I know them all. I used to. Now I don't know any of them. But uh, I think I, therefore, in fact, I acted on behalf of Pons uh, when the pricing of the merger was being done. So someone asked me, hey, but you know, you're not, you can't be on both sides. Said, right now I'm on this side. After this merger is done, it's a, I disappear from that side because I have to, because our firm's there. I said, why are you fighting so hard? I said, why, why not? Who's doing it? Well, anyway, that's all academic. I think uh, I used to spend a lot of time with him. And then for the last many years, we haven't. And I'll end by saying again, it's uh, somewhat uh, appropriate, uh, Balu, that you organize this thing today. Uh, as somebody said, you, uh, the Matas Cricket Club, where I've spent many evenings with him, would be today, I mean, the weekend of the Chepok test. I mean, he wouldn't <laughs> have left that stadium. Uh, uh, and he used to be in that uh, pavilion with all his friends. I think Therefore, we have done him a great honor and done ourselves an even bigger honor in remembering him. My condolences, of course, to his family and uh, not only his, his wife, Indu, and his daughters, but all the extended Pons family, which includes all of us sitting here uh, mem mem memorizing him, memorializing him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Akit. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have some time. Uh, does anybody else want to say something? Uh, Deepak Chandani, P.K. Vishwanathan. Uh, Mr. Who Butt. Else? Mr. Butt, yeah. Mr. Butt. So, Balram, I just say hello to everybody. Uh, it's uh, This is Deepak here. I do remember VN with a lot of fondness. Uh, running Delhi uh, after Atul moved on uh, from Ponds and then getting involved with the whole Russian deal. And he's explaining to me how the ethics of the individual are different and must always, uh, must always be ahead of what all you have to do in business because dealing with the Russians had its own, uh, its, its own side effects, so to say. So I still remember many, many learnings, but this one stayed with me where uh, he told me that uh, it's very, very important that I, my ethics, are ethics that I can live with, uh, even though I see around me so many things uh, which you know I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want to emulate. So just with that, and also to say thank you for organizing this. It's indeed also uh, a place where one's been able to see old, 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 well remembered and well loved faces. Uh, so thank you for that, and sincere condolences uh, to the family. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Do you have anything to share? I, I have something to share. Yes, Mr. Butt, we'll come to you. Yeah. Sorry. We don't talk, we allow Mr. Butt to... No, no, I'm, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. Please, please go ahead. But you are a, you are a guest, so PK is part of us. So. I'll, wait, I'll wait for Mr. Butt. He's my guru. Thank no. You. Mr. Butt. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Butt has been Mr. Narayanan's personal auditor for a very, very long time, so... Uh, it's the great sense of loss which I have, I want to share. Recently, I mean, he was in constant touch with me in connection with his tax matters during the period prior to his sudden passing away. So it's all the more difficult for me to accept the turn of events. He was a thorough gentleman. He was a gentleman to the core. 
he believed in perfection in whatever he did he was very particular that all facts are properly reported and taxes duly paid in time he also kept himself abreast of the latest developments on tax issues which could help proper legal compliances he was very particular that there are there are no omissions his power of grasping was phenomenal of course most of you have been work with him so you know better so once i prepared a three page matter on tax implication of a particular issue which of course i took some time for me to i mean it took some time for me to prepare and thought i leave it with, with him to ponder over when i presented the same to him he just took less than 5 minutes and discussed with me all the issues which i had raised it was phenomenal i mean it was uh, Of course, as most of you have yourself mentioned, they also felt he was a leader. In, he was a leader in the true sense of the term. He was also he had very genuine concern towards all his colleagues, towards his employees, supervisory staff, and whoever was connected with the company. So, out of his genuine concern towards them, and also their families, especially. He was instrumental in formation of Pond's Welfare Trust, and he was a trustee till his demise, which are even functional even today. Of course, he has he had uh, inspired a great number of his associates, a large number of them who, by themselves, they also proved to be great leaders later on. My association started with my father's uh, association with him in 1980s. so i mean we miss a great person he was a true spaceman he also believed in doing everything in an ethical fashion ethical way he was not only bothered about the success he thought that everything should be achieved in an ethical fashion in the true sense of the letter and spirit of law anyway we will miss him i mean we all have to accept it as a fact of life and move on our condolences to his bereaved family Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Bhatt. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have been going through very trying moments uh, for the whole of from December 30th. That's why I was keeping quiet for a long time. But I thought I shouldn't be selfish. I should share some uh, thoughts on Mr. B. And I was hoping that uh, there would be a space where they can join in. See, we I worked quite intimately with him, although I was a very junior person uh, on tax. to discuss but i mean there's no point in discussing about that but what i got out of him all of us know that you know he's such a professional a thoroughbred uh, professional i've seen his other side also i don't know if i'm going to pleasantly surprise uh, uh, his daughter ashwini uh, as soon as she had gone to the university so once when i went in you know, a normal it would used to be a serious session she was very happy so we were just uh, talking and then he said you know why i'm happy he pulled out a letter i don't know with an email but it was type written uh, print out was there when the professor in us wrote to mr vn as a father of ashwini saying that he has got a well brought up child who will be a big success in life he was so happy about it he shared that personal thoughts with me uh, congratulations ashwini i don't i'm i've come for your wedding reception at the madras race club but i, I is very difficult for you to Uh, remember me the second instance was when we were working about 8:30 9 one evening uh, those were days when there was no cell phone uh, mgr had died and i got a call from home to the office one of the pions he took the liberty of uh, knocking the door i think it was swami and unni who were there with us when we were only two of us were in office then mm-hmm. my brother told me that there is a uh, violence be careful we are between bihari hotel and uh, arts college So when I came in, he said, "You you have to go." I said, "No, it's not. That's I think we have to go because uh, MGR has died and there's a lot of violence." And then he said, "Okay, let's pack up for the day." And when we were resting, I told him, "Sir, you go. You come in your Benz. If it's not too much of a problem, why don't I drive you home in the Maruti 800? The damage will be less if people throw stones." Uh, he thought for a moment. He said, "Yes, Vidyadharan is still here, his old driver." And he said, "We will ask him to drive, and I will ask him to drop you at your home." I mean, even when. we were to think talking about uh, taking his safely he was more worried about how i will reach him now that is the type of uh, person he was 
and he continues to remain. I, I've lost a great, uh, I, I don't know how to describe that, uh, a great person, a leader. Many of my friends still keep talking to me about how I used to work with him. The other thing is that uh, uh, after he had retired, Suresh Rajagopal's brother, he was a chartered accountant in uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Abu Dhabi chapter wanted a good speaker to come and address them, chartered accountants. Too. So they, they suggested Mr. Vian's name. I sought a meeting with him. I asked him and he went and addressed. It was a big success. And he's such a nice person that every time we meet, I meet him after that. Do you still remember, you know, you arranged, it, it was not I who arranged, it was his charisma and uh, leadership qualities which made the others call. But he always used to give the credit to the person who, uh, who arranged for this, the nice person. And then next opportunity was when he was director of Foster's India. They had a meeting in uh, Dubai, board meeting. And at that time, Suresh Nathagopal was the CFO of uh, uh, African and Eastern, A and A and E, who were the biggest distributors for them. So I, I put connected Suresh Rajagopal with him. He was so happy. I think he visited Suresh and Nalini for lunch. You know, such a personal relationship he developed. The last thing that he did, I mean, well, I mean, I met him many times after that. He he and his wife came for my daughter's wedding. I mean, that was the biggest uh, honor that I have had from him. I I really pray for the families happiness and success, all of them recover well and uh, and all of them enjoy the moments and life of Mr. Narayan. Thank you all. Thank you. It, it is very typical of Mr. Narayan to remember the littlest thing that you do for him. And, uh, you know, I, I, very many years ago, he uh, his, Ashwini was trying to get into Stella Maris and he was talking to me and I had, uh, yeah, I knew a lecturer there. So we gave an, uh, you know, gave an introduction. And he, Mr. Narayanan remembered it for 20, 30 years. And every time he would say that to me, it, it was really nothing, you know, but <laughs> he, 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 any, any help he received, he made a very big thing of. And any, no he, he gives huge help and he doesn't remember that. Too. <laughs> Shankar, uh, do you want to say anything? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Brahman. So uh, I uh, joined rather later than all of you, 83. And I stayed for a fairly short time in Ponds. So I cannot claim the level of intimacy that many of you had with Mr. Narayanan. But I did have the good fortune of looking at the reflection of what he has created. And this is how it happened. Uh, the company that I started camps at some point in time, uh, it so happened that we needed to add management to our bench strength. And uh, in fact, it starts with Mr. Balraman. There came a time when we needed a proper chairman for the company because our company was becoming large and people were looking at us and there was some concern about the, the external reputation of the people running the company and so on and so forth. So I asked Mr. Balraman, he kindly agreed to be the chairman. And through him, then I spoke to Mr. Vien and he agreed to be a part of an advisory board that we created of some eminent personalities. So it was in that capacity that I actually dealt with him far longer than I ever had an opportunity to interact with him in Ponds. More than that, a large number of colleagues who finally joined me as part of management of my company are all products of Ponds. And uh, it was amazing how we all just fell to working together. I mean, there was such, uh, uh, so many people have spoken about the, the culture, the DNA, the values, etc. And that the commonality of that, uh, of that value system made us fall into like There was just no complication of, you know, getting lateral hires and getting them settled into your culture. None of that. It was like there had never been a break between working together in Ponds and then working together 10 years, 15 years later in my company. And that is, you know, that is totally to the credit of Mr. Narayanan and the company that he built. So, as I said, it may not be through direct anecdotal experience of uh, sort of interacting with the Mr. Narayanan, like many of you had the good fortune. It was more through observing his product and benefiting from his product and inferring the greatness of what he did. My heartfelt condolences to his family. I uh, had been in touch with him till recently, but not in the last year or so. Uh, so, uh, as I said, my heartfelt condolences to his family and to all of you out there. Thank you. Thank you, Shankar. Uh, anyone else uh, like Prasad, uh, uh, Koteshwar Prasad, TV Tyagarajan, Rajesh, uh, any, anyone else? Oh, 
okay if the, if none of you want to speak uh, uh, ashwini aarti mrs narayanan uh, prem any any one of you want to say anything uh yeah mr balram and this is aarti here hi aarti so you know i am mr narayan's younger daughter yes so, hi and uh, just on you know my mother is also here listening with me and so is ashwini okay so you know first of all you know you know i knew appa as a great dad you know is totally supportive of me you know professionally in my medical career personally for both ashwini and myself but you know he talked about all of you a lot so though we have never met personally you know i've heard about all his stories about you and i've heard all your names so you know we always knew he had you know so many dimensions to him you know both intellectually and ethically and he passed on that to us also but you know it was great to hear these stories it was very heartwarming you know to listen to all of you you know it gives us a lot of perspective about him you know in this you know sort of dimension so you know we really appreciate hearing this you know it was wonderful to hear it and you know my mother would also like to say you know thank you for sharing all these stories you know it really sort of for two hours you know it helped us you know to you know to the great loss to lose appa but it was wonderful hearing you you know say these things about him so on behalf of you know ashwini amma and i you know thank you so much for taking the time and we really appreciate hearing these stories dr arti so nice of you to say this i recall uh visiting uh, your mother's wedding reception in chennai very very many years ago right. uh, in uh, tinagar and uh, so uh, mrs narayanan namaskaram, namaskaram. Uh, i hope you are uh, uh, getting better uh, mr narayanan always uh, preached courage confidence and uh, you know meeting any challenge uh, a boldly uh, and uh, you know he he had great faith in god and uh, you know where, wherever he went even to kodaikanal he would always go to kurinji and our temple and so on so uh, you know everything will work out for you and your family he he we, we hindus believe in the that the soul does not die it's only the body that it, it changes the body so mr narayanan is with us with you and uh, we are looking at uh, doing something more permanent permanent like uh, having an annual memorial lecture Uh, in the name of mr v narayanan and giving a couple of scholarships which you suggested so the work is going on pandit is uh, working on that along with mr shankar so when that is fruitful we will definitely let you know our idea is to have it on his birthday on january 29th every year okay. maybe this year we will have it on june 29th so yeah thanks to varaman that's wonderful to hear and uh... you know i think mrs narayan is also here and you know she just wanted me to say again that you know we've been listening to this for the past 2 hours you know she has met many of you before and she has also has you know a lot of memories so it's nice to hear that you know appa you know lives on you know in those memories with all of you he does now guys gentlemen thank thanks for all of you i know that each one of you have a unique relationship very strong bond with mr narayanan it was uh, you know it was very very good that you could speak from your heart and that the family of mr narayanan could uh, listen to us you know like i said to you mrs narayanan uh, you know you are like uh, mrs narayanan was like lord ram you are like you know, lady sita and we are all like uh, anjaneya as the vanar senas we are here to ensure that uh, you know you are not uh, finding any anything difficult whatever Uh, be it a tax matter or LIC policy, we we will take care of that. We'll ensure that there is no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Narayan. Kindly uh, be there and guide us, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. <clears throat>
Hello? Is the meeting over?